The next question is, do we have to understand and believe in the Trinity to be saved? Okay, so obviously this is a related question, a good follow-up question to, to the, the last one. And um, obviously I believe in the, the triunity of the Godhead and Trinity. Um, and I, as far as I know, everybody in the congregation that I know of believes it. There may be somebody who doesn't, but we, what we're demanding is that uh, you, you, one of our, our core doctrines is that we, we must agree that Jesus is eternal God Almighty. That means that, that he doesn't have a beginning. He's, he wasn't created. He is eternal. He is the, the eternal God, Almighty the Almighty, and the scriptures say he is uh, the Almighty. Um, uh, and now, this this idea of the, the Godhead, is certainly it's in the Bible. The word Trinity is not in the Bible, but we, we've concluded that the Trinity is correct. Um, there's Jesus is fully God without a beginning. The Father's Fully God without a beginning, the Son's fully, the Holy Spirit's fully God without a beginning. This out of beginning is the reason I'm emphasizing it is because this is the the, the, the distinguishing feature of God. That everything else has a beginning. Only God is eternal, without a beginning. You cannot be God if you if you had a beginning. You were created. You, you have, so he these are eternal. They they are the creators. Uh, um. But and yet the Bible says there's only one God. So how do you how do you reconcile each of these three are God, and yet we conclude there's only one God? Well, a lot of times people have just said, well, this call it a mystery. Um, however, uh, the church wasn't satisfied with that. Um, you know, when you get into the second, third, fourth centuries, you have a series of um, councils uh, they're called uh, ecumenical council ecumenical council means that the, the church leaders from the known world from all over the known world all the leaders come together in one place and have a discussion about something and come to a conclusion and then they formulate it into a, what's called a canon a, a, an official position uh, and then they often they will actually write a creed to try to put it into words the earliest creed is the Apostles' Creed, uh, and, and then you had the, the Nicene Creed in 325 AD, uh, and then you had the, I think 60 years later, you had the Revised Nicene Creed, uh, and then you had, the, 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 there's several more, but the, the, the one that was, to, to me, the finale that finally put it all together com more completely, and it should be done, is the Athanasian Creed. All of these creeds, I have uh, gone through word by word uh, and taught on them in a playlist titled uh, Church Creeds. So you can go through that and you'll not only learn what all those creeds are, but what you'll find is that from one creed to the next, it, it, they progressively added on a little bit more detail to make it more and more clear. But what, what the point I want everybody to get from this is that it took the the, the, the best theologians from all over the world over the period of numerous meetings over several centuries uh, to uh, formulate it and put it into words in a way that, that we can try to put into words this trinity. Uh, so uh, to expect, and by the way, uh, until this was done, the, the word trinity wasn't even, didn't exist until Tert Tertullian in the second century. So um, uh, all the people who got saved up to that point, this was not clarified. It was not even uh, much debated in the first century. Uh, as far as I know, there was no debate about this at all. But in the second century and third century, they started asking these questions and trying to, well, how can that be? And let's discuss this and figure it out. And so they would go through the scriptures and they would uh, take the best minds uh, in the world to, to try to, uh, figure it out based on the scriptures and then put it into words. So how can we require a person to understand all that 
as a prerequisite to getting saved. You know, again, you would have to become a theologian. Uh, you'd have to say to the, someone, you can't get saved unless you, you go to that playlist and you study all those creeds and you really understand all the details. And there's a lot of details, a lot of little features that will blow your mind. It's really a fascinating study. Uh, and, and, and also one of the reasons they did this is because you had a lot of heresies coming up through those early centuries where they were claiming that Jesus is not God, but he's, uh, he's uh, just a, 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 the great, a great man, a, a great moral teacher, but he's not really God. Uh, or, or that uh, uh, there, there's just the heresies had to be addressed. And so uh, they had to defend the deity of Christ and uh, find a way to, um, to put it in words. And then now it is, it is the, the standard. It is the accepted norm in Christendom. Uh, there are some people, uh, it's called uh, Sibelius, who first popularized this, that Jesus is, uh, is God, uh, it, it's the Jesus only position or modalism, where Jesus is Father, Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Well, uh, instead of existing as all three simultaneously, three distinct persons, he exists one at a time. He simply just changes hats like, okay, now I'm Jesus. Now I'm the Father. Now I'm the Spirit. You know, uh, that's modalism. He changes forms. He's, all, he's really all three. He's all Jesus. Uh, but then the scriptures really tell us that no, and the, and, the, and the Trinity doctrine tells us no, all three persons are distinct. And they all exist at the same time, distinct, but yet one. One substance, they, the term they were arguing about was called homoousis, which means the same substance. The substance of God, the essence of God, it's Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father, all the same substance, all equally God. <clears throat> okay, so I would say no. To expect a person to understand and believe the Trinity, you can explain it to them, and uh, they, they they probably wouldn't understand it. They might wonder how is that possible. But then you could either try to teach it to them, or send them to those creeds, uh, or, or you could try to explain to them as best you can. The the, the example I give people is that the, the, in the first book of the Bible, uh, early in Genesis, it says, "Let us make man in our image." So this is God speaking. And he said, let us make man in our image. So you see that there is some, that God is speaking in, as a plural rather than a singular. So the, 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 plus the first reference to God in the Bible in Genesis 1.1, it says, uh, 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 in the beginning, God created, so on, but it, the God, the word God is Elohim, and it's plural. So these things are uh, our first indication that there's some kind of plurality uh, in, uh, in that God has as, 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 a, as an attribute. He's plural, and yet over and over, the Bible says monotheism, one God. Uh, so how do you explain it? Well, I think the examples in the Bible, let us make man in our image, man is triune. I'm Luke, I'm one person, but I'm Luke, the body, I'm Luke, the mind or soul, and I'm Luke, the spirit, and yet one. Made in God's image is three, and yet one. That, to me, if I was going to try to explain to someone the, the Trinity in the simplest way possible, that, that's how I would give it, illustrate it. Okay, Ben, I know I said a lot, but go ahead. Your turn, please. Well, I think you pretty much said it all. I agree. You do not have to believe uh, or understand the Trinity uh, to be saved. Um, so I, I, I would agree with that. That is something that uh, even believers struggle to understand uh, fully. So I, I do I simply don't believe it. I don't think the Bible teaches that. It's nothing, you know, explicit. I think the Bible is very explicit uh, about certain things that we must, we must believe. And the Trinity is it's definitely nothing that's really explicit in the Bible. Although it's clear uh in many passages I, I don't think it's i don't i don't see it that's explicit 
Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, if I've if I've stimulated your interest um, in this subject, then go to my channel, Brother Luke, find the playlist, uh, Church Creeds, um, and, and uh, you you you'll learn what all those creeds say. And, and uh, in my attempt to review the creeds and explain them, see, I, I have a lot of problems with what they call the church fathers. I have another playlist titled uh, Early Church History, where from right after the apostles, starting with Polycarp, and, you know, he, he was an apostle to uh, John, but the, the, the next generation, people came right after the apostles, on and then into the second, third, and fourth centuries, all these church leaders, they're referred to as church fathers. Well, guess what? It, it didn't take even uh, one generation for the church to go into apostasy in terms of, of, of the, the, the gospel. The gospel was adulterated and ruined right early in the second century by adding communion and water baptism as a requirement and works. So um, uh, you can't trust the church fathers for the gospel, in my opinion. But I will say the work that they did defining the Godhead in these creeds was, was wonderful. 